What's up, guys? It's Damp. So we are on week three of the uh, Hamlet, um, continuing with the Let's Play that we had uh, last week. So let's move forward. And what we're going to kind of look at is I'm going to walk through um, a little bit of the progression that you'll see on the characters, as well as like my direction and focus as, as I'm shifting gears now as we're in week three. So to see more of these buildings open up in the Hamlet, you can unlock. We now have the ability to go to a courtyard quest, which we are going to skip for the time being because we want to give ourselves a little more flexibility. So what we're going to focus on is probably continue to beat the ruins to death for a little while. And the only reason for that is it's, it's probably the one that we're able to form the best in. So if we look, if you've got a lot of crusaders and you've got a lot of plague doctors, that's really where your focus want you, where you want it to be is in the ruins because those enemies are simply a little bit weaker than what you'll find in the rest of them. Also, since we popped that survival guide last time, we're able to bring the grave robber who will give us a little more, again, flexibility with her scout checks to be able to pick and choose where we want to go rather than just relying on RNG. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to kind of look through, build a party, um, Again, like we did last time, we're going to focus on the Plague Doctors. If you notice one thing, I'm leaving him. I'm not really curing his stress. And that is simply because he's going to be probably dismissed. Like I said last week, think of your employees as... Think of your, your uh, heroes as employees rather than friends. Uh, that will give you a little bit more... Uh, I guess the word would be... Uh, kind of think about them. You aren't thinking about them on a relationship basis rather than... You know, you're not going to name them. You're not going to get too attached to them because odds are you need to make a decision where if somebody's stressed and as you can tell, we don't have the room in the roster for what's coming back next round, we'll probably be able to open it up if we do manage to come across some, some deeds. But as, as you look here, you look at it and you go, oh, we only have two slots. Somebody's going to have to go. If you would have sent this guy to heal, he would have spent about 1500 losing essentially 10% of your income and not making it as worthwhile as probably what it should have been. So... With that, we're going to probably count on the fact that we're going to dismiss him. So we're going to prioritize stress first, then classes, um, and then really, like, we're not going to bring Renault. We're going to keep him. We're going to keep Demos so, so that we can get the achievement later on if we happen to go all that go that far with this playthrough. Um, it, looking at this, we know we're going to bring the Grave Robber because we want the scouting ability. Uh, and looking at her perks... She's probably going to have to be in either slot 3 or slot 2 with what we have available. I should say combat skills and not perks. So, looking through the rest of these guys, we probably do want to bring a Crusader, even though their stress level is a little bit higher. So, we'll plan on running this Medium Explorer uh, because we'll be able to cure some of that stress. So, with that, we'll probably bring a Plague Doctor, one that has Blinding, gla blinding Gas, rather than Plague Grenades. We'll bring that. And then we have a very limited assortment of trinkets. So same thing. The survival guide is going to go here. Move skill chance really isn't that, that good of something to, to hope for. Move resist, not good. Um, none of the rest of these are good enough to offset their negatives. Like the disease resist, we'll just cure that if we really want to keep somebody. Odds are we don't care to keep somebody at this point. And the rest of these guys have no trinkets. So what's important is that our healer has divine comfort we have divine grace here uh, these really her her perks as long as you have pick to the face lunge isn't critical either in case your party gets shuffled i guess and then we're going to bring the crusader simply because they're they're going to do more damage to unholy so it's not ideal to bring in a crusader especially one that's about halfway through the stress level so odds are that he's going to get um uh he's going to get a uh Stress check at 100, obviously. And we may end up having to dismiss him just like we will the, the highwayman. But that's okay. You're, you're really, at this point, just looking to farm money, farm deeds to build up your hamlet as fast as possible. Not really worried about keeping the characters. So in provisioning, uh, let me pull out the spreadsheet. Hopefully you guys were able to see that during the last episode. And this, again, just gives me an idea on... Da -da 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 -da, what I want to take as far as like food, torches. So I'm going to bring 18 food. I'm bringing 
three torches, or I'm so, sorry, three shovels, 13 torches. Oops. We've got, in this, in a ruins run, you don't need to bring any extra torches. We're going to bring two herbs. We're going to bring three holy water. Whoops. Two bandages, no anti-venom, and two keys. Again, that's all on the spreadsheet, guys. It's just to give me a point of reference so that I keep consistently. I don't go crazy um, on the amount of provisions I bring. I do tend to be a little more conservative versus others. Um, but everybody has a different way of looking at this for sure. sure so. so with that, we're going to go ahead and go. We've got our firewood. Um, got pretty much following to the parameters. Now, earlier on in the game, I would say that you probably do want to be a little more conservative when it comes to how many food and how many torches. So maybe you want to go 20, maybe you want to go 15. Because occasionally you're going to have to backtrack. You don't have the scouting ability. So feel free to be flexible with that. All right, so we, it's a good thing we got a first scout check. We're going to prioritize the rooms to scout that don't have fights on the way to them or in them. Obviously, that's not rocket science. And we're only going to use torches really when we need to. But we do want to keep about 100% torch level. So we're going to pick this up on the way back because it'll be a little bit darker on our way back and sometimes that leads to a little better loot roll. Okay, so this becomes the primary target because of his stress and the stress that he does. So we're gonna start and just stun. A blazing star is born. And since she doesn't have an offensive move to use, we're just gonna crit and, and I hope that we get a stress reduction and, and that's typically is the move that I, I use. So we're gonna throw poison darts and we botch that. Yes. But at least we did pull off the stun, so he's not able to stress right away. And that was lucky. And of course, it does go first because he's fast. And he picks the high stress target, which is usually the way it goes. grenade this it's probably not enough to kill him oh it is okay let's say but it was gonna be close or not having judgment is it's not terrible but it's definitely not not a good thing because it, it you feel like you're wasting a turn with her a lot Stun. There we go. Same thing, you're really just, when you become a spam bot, it, it just, you feel like you're kind of wasting a turn, but early on you don't have the money to go out and buy everybody what you want them to have. It just doesn't make sense. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. And the only thing she really has is illumination. All right. We're gonna open up where we can, where we feel that it makes sense. Um, and then we'll use the curios where we feel we need to in the other ones. I'm gonna save the holy water till late in the raid when we have, but when we have access to uh, hopefully a confessional booth to relieve some of the stress. So most of our damage is gonna come from these two rows, so that's where we're gonna start first. And we're gonna play grenade back there. 
you could stun here, but with limited uses and really trying to focus more on the people that are uh, going to stress us rather than hit us with damage. Play grenade should kill them on the next turn anyway. Nope. Didn't hit him for enough damage. Masterfully executed. So he'll be dead next turn, so we'll be able to heal a little bit. This here dead anyway. The wounds of war can be healed, but never hidden. Probably won't get another chance either. Success so clearly in view. Or is it merely a trick of the light? HP. All right. Got a scout check. That's good. We know we can go here. We, you actually could backtrack to avoid that fight as well if your your health was really low. But we really don't need to do that. Okay. So we have again trap this arm. She's gonna get. Stress relief from that. Don't touch the books. Don't ever touch the books. Not worth it. Okay, we will just go through this fight. Okay, so these guys really aren't that resistant to blight, so we'll hit them with play grenades. Of course I say that, and that's what happens. I went pick to the face there because I figured I was going to AoE either way, so if she didn't kill it, one of them was going to get killed. These are the types of fights that if you don't get these at least one of them down right away, it does make it significantly more difficult for you, especially if your characters are slower, because they will stun, um, and they can bring on quite a bit of stress, even though they're they're very low HP. So, you guys saw that we brought firewood earlier on, and one of the reasons we uh, haven't used it yet is really you want to try and keep till the last possible minute to use that stuff, because it will allow you to cure stress the very last minute, which is really what you want to hold on to. So we don't have a choice outside of having this room battle, so we're going to go ahead and walk into it. Hopefully we'll get another scout check there. But again, I'm letting the the uh, torch go down as low as possible before we run into the curios that we're, that we're gonna loot the promise of safety. to get a better loot table. All right, so this is the one we're gonna avoid here. 
if, if we can help it, that's our first choice that we want to get rid of. And then, same thing, play grenade, trying to be a little more aggressive to hopefully kill it. Yeah, so he's done. Um, that was a better roll, finally, on one of those. And this guy has, even though he has higher prot, he has lower HP, so we're more likely to be able to take him down in at least two hits. So, that's why he's the second choice there, because that's the one we can reach. Ouch. That's unfortunate. Well, he won't be down in two turns now. Well, oh, maybe. Give them no quarter. I don't ever remember him being that. Yeah, he's not even blight resistant. That must just be a really low roll for us. Try and get rid of one of these to move him up. Yeah. Now he'll be stuck with, uh, I think it's Bayonet Jab. Which is normally one that has a very low accuracy base, so you're able to dodge that a little more often. Of course, our crusader is just going to tank it to the face, though. Their formation is broken. Maintain the offensive. All right, so we did pull some food out of there. We do need the crests for sure. That's both good. We're gonna pop up our curio list because I don't remember which one this is. So this, we did come across a secret room, that would be a bad, that would be a loss for us. But I don't think we're going to be able to scout a secret room either way because our scouting is so low. So we're just going to take this where we can take it. Finding the stuff is only the first test. Now it must be carried home. Alright. With that, we did get our scout check. Since this isn't linear, we're going to have to, oh no. Of course, I say that. Of course, and there would be a secret door there. Should have a lot more money in it. But, what are you going to do? So since there's no combat, we're going to start to head this way. In hindsight, I should have tried to do a scout check first, but... Really wasn't thinking, but that would have been the right play there. Okay, so we know there's one fight, so that's probably worth clearing this. There's only one fight on the way down here. And that's why its survival book is very good. Otherwise, we would have probably walked into those. At least taken stress, if not damage as well. Right, so that room's clear. Move past this fight. Got a lot of guys in the third slot resist our attacks last few runs. I'm really just trying to get rid of one turn if I can. So we did do that. Slowly. Gently. This is how a life is taken.
can tell this party's much faster than ours. This is where I wish I had an AoE, but that's okay. That's a good heal. Compared to the other roles he's done, that's really good. Or she's done, that's that's a much better heal. Since they have prod, that's why I'm hitting him with blight. What is this? Victories mount. Really not that good. We would end up probably selling this. Um, we want to see if we can put to use something rather than just throwing stuff away. Uh, I'm going to skip it. I'll hit this on the way back again for the loot table increase. Oh, we actually got another we had another battle pop up. left on both of those. I might be able to one-shot two of these, though. Okay. I think I can. It'll go last, I'm sure, but... Compassion is a rarity in the fevered pit. Oh, he didn't. Oh, that's right. Surprise. Okay. So these guys are going to last another turn, but they're... We can really focus on just healing and, uh... Recovering any blights or bleeds or any other things they have. But we, if we have to, we can shuffle around. We can buff whatever it might be. We had to turn our torches up simply because we had. We had another fight to go to. So again, same thing. Um, we are pretty much out of torches, so I'm gonna hold on to that. Um, food I could use. We get another check. It would be a little brutal. Um, but she does have illumination, and he has. This one here, or his self mark. So that's it's okay. I'm gonna dump the herbs because we're gonna need another stack anyway. And we should need these last two rooms. Maybe we. Ah, I'm gonna say maybe we get lucky and find a key, but I don't think so. Also, like I was saying last episode, guys, keep in mind that if you have a curio here, um, it'll say you have a curio, and if you have a quest item, it will say quest location, whether it's in a room or outside of it. I did bring that up last week, but that's something that a lot of new players don't recognize. Okay, since this is like late in the raid, we're going to dump our holy water in here. We are coming out with a, a pretty good amount of loot. Since we don't have fights up here, we don't have to worry about the torches as much. But anyway, 
we can pop in here. But unfortunately, because that secret room you'll notice does count as a room. Um, don't think this works, but no. Uh, bollocks. Well, let's let's check this last curio and see what it is. Okay, so good rock a shovel on this. One of my favorite animations, actually. Okay. Since we know this room's empty, we're gonna have her disarm this for the stress, and then we're gonna hit our campfire right here. And Jeter's, we're done. A spark without kindling. It's a goal without hope. So our objective is to get our stress as low as possible. We don't need to use it for buffs anymore. So Gallows Humor is a clutch one. That's really probably the only one I have. But, I mean, this would be okay. We're going to get minus five stress, but we also have the chance that we obviously could get ambushed. So this one's minus 15 stress, which is good. Brings his down to 30. All right. Well, she took a little bit extra, but that's probably worth it. Because his came down to 10. It makes somebody unusable to then usable in the next run. Okay. So we just have to hope we get the RNG. We didn't. Cocker. Oh, and we got a madman. And we got surprised. So all that stuff we just did is for naught. And that does happen sometimes, especially early on, but in my opinion, it's worth the risk. I'm going to try and get rid of him. ASAP. The will to fight falters. He doesn't have his move spell, so she needs to move back. ASAP. I wouldn't have hurt her if she got moved back, actually. So we're gonna punish for taking that chance, but again, like I said last time, it's really it's not the end of the world. It's typically worth the risk. And I would say most of the time I actually have on the Vestal I keep the ability to prevent the ambush. And again, if you're losing somebody this early on, guys, it's not really that big of a deal. That actually hurt her through um, the buff that we had given her. Which is bad RNG. So outside of the Vestal, who absolutely need, the rest of these guys may be getting dismissed just because of the amount of stress we're going to pick up here. Needed to get rid of one turn would be nice. We're working from so far behind now. Especially with Doomsay.
Good lord. He's going to be rendered pretty much useless. And she hasn't hit the broadside of a barn. I could just clear corpses. I may just do that. And she can't hit anything anyway. He only needs one more. Still can't do it. No, he'll be dead anyway next time, but he did take more stress, but still worth it. A trifling victory, but a victory nonetheless. Um. I don't think it's worth it to make that much room now that I'm looking at it. Oh. Okay, good enough. The shifted corridors and so we got five more deeds. We got, I think, eight crests. We did collect a fair amount of treasure, truthfully. It's just... Uh, that last timing... The raid went wrong right at the end, but outside of that, it was a pretty good run. So we're hoping we get at least a positive quirk out of it. No. Not really. But they may need to be dismissed, and that's just kind of the way it goes. She has paid dearly for her freedom. And deserves better than this place. Shieldbreaker is amazing, by the way. If you guys don't have that DLC, she is incredible. I think she's probably the strongest character in the game right now. If not, she's really close. Her one minus is she wouldn't do well in places that are resistant to blight. Wouldn't do as well, but she'd still do pretty good. Her impale move is still strong. Alright, so let's go to our stagecoach and see if we can upgrade. So we can upgrade the size of our barracks, which would help. We'd be able to take all of these guys. Um, outside of that, we could only take one and we need to dismiss people. So since it is kind of a numbers game early on, that's what I'm going to do. Just take everybody. Foolishly seeking fortune and glory in this domain. Same thing, our next upgrade is probably going to be the Stagecoach Network again. And then we're going to begin to pick and choose our way through. But we want to take a look. Let's see. Nothing great. And again, I'm only looking really at the positive quirks. Old Roger, the, uh, <laughs> the Arbalist. <laughs> it's nice. Nothing there. It's great. This is actually really good. These two are really good, and it might be worth locking in. Because if you look, ranged, 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 melee, that's a heal, and these are just buffs, but even another range. So you may use incision. It's not bad, um, but these two got to be locked in. So ASAP, I don't even know if we can do it yet. It's pretty early. Oof, it's so much money though. Wow, it's so much money. Accuracy is probably more important. But these are both really good. Uh, it's so early on to do it. Okay, she's not going to get replaced. We know that. Deadly isn't bad. He... For him, as a Houndmaster, Deadly's okay, but I'd rather have Luminous, I'd rather have Evasive, I'd rather have, like, Dodge Stack perks for him. On Guard, again, isn't bad. It's not, not great, but it, it's definitely, it's better than most of the perks you're going to end up with. All right. Let's check the Nomad Wagon since we have a little bit of money. Nothing good there. Um... And again, really, guys, all we're looking at, now that we have the survivalist here, Wild places. She is a stalwart this isn't bad, but it's probably one of the last things you'll upgrade. We can look at, like, what do you, 
you know, let's say you want to unlock certain camping skills, it's still really early to worry about that. I don't know that I would worry about it. This archer's ring could be good on an early plague doctor. Outside of that, most of the rest of these are really not that strong. But this one's pretty good on a leper. And we don't even have one yet, so. But I would probably focus on the shield breaker early on. But they are going to give you, when you do work on your shield breaker, keep in mind that when you camp, you are going to get, uh, spoiler alert, if you don't want spoiled, probably mute it for the next 20 seconds. When you camp, you are going to get an interaction where you have to fight additional mobs. So you may want to wait till you're a little, you have at least a party that's pretty strong before you go in. But the impale ability is incredible. It's really, really, really good. And, I mean, you have armor piercing, which helps so much. Breaks guard and cannot be guarded is great in the cove. Adder's Kiss is okay. The, the going through the stealth ones, I really don't worry about. Captivate's pretty strong. And then Serpent's Way is great, especially on boss fights or up against, like, uh, the giants or the champions. Things that are going to hit really, really hard. It works really well. So, again, we don't have any great trinkets that we need to worry about. They pretty much all stink. So we're going to be piecemealing together a team. So now we've popped up the boss fight. We've got another survival guide, which isn't bad. That's a short run, though. It would be a lot less forgiving. Uh, the Crusader Seal is really not that strong. Plus two speed would be okay. If there was a really, really strong set piece here, I would definitely do this, even though it's early on in the game. I would definitely do it. But this one is one of the worst ones you could get. Because you're not going to use your Vestal in that capacity, or you shouldn't, at least in my opinion. That's not bad for our Arbalist. Plus three crit. The speed one's probably better, because I'll be using the... Uh, Grave Robber more. But it's also a little less forgiving in that particular instance. So the leper one is good. We don't have a leper yet. Survival guide is good. This would be okay to offset the other one we have. I think we're going to try this. Um, let's see. Who should we bring? Let's clear that out. Since we know this one's a really good one, we're going to take... Even though we don't have Binding Gas, Binding Gas rather, the, the rest of her abilities are okay. How are we doing? Okay, this, she's a little high on stress, so we probably should park her. Uh, same here, park that one. She does not have If It Bleeds, so we don't really want to force that. What's the Jester have? He has some bleeds. We'll bring that. And he's got steady. Not bad. Um, we don't have anybody who really AoE heals or anything. So probably better if we do bring this one. We don't have any great scouts. That being said... Put this one here. Uh, range skills to speed. Mm, it might be worth. Not ideal, but speed that, that might be just better to use since we're going to be throwing impale. Puncture we may also use too in the cove. So since it's a short run, it's going to be not very forgiving. So let me pull up my spreadsheet, make sure I have all my provisions in order. We'll move forward. Okay, so Cove, short, we need 12 food. We need eight torches. We need two shovels. And 
no extra torches, two herbs, two herbs rather. Um, got one herbs, no holy water, two bandages, no anti venom, one key. I'm gonna bring an extra key actually. We need one additional shovel. I'm gonna bring a couple extra torches. We have a little bit of room. And I can define a little bit of room as the collector tends to chase you after your inventory is about two thirds of the way full. So I usually at least like to keep the first row full if I can help it without wasting money. Okay. I think we're probably as good as we can be. Let's double check here. Move resist, don't care about that. Disease resist, really don't care about that. Rather have the dodge. Yeah, nothing else there. Kind of disappointed the cove doesn't have sharks, by the way. I really would have liked that, but maybe we'll hope in Darkest Dungeon 2. We'll get sharks and German Shepherds. Okay, 100% of room battles, so we have to find the battles. That's pretty much the whole instance right there, though. <laughs> so we will grab all these curios, we'll find a way. And we'll also avoid the uh, um, hallway battles. Oh, wow. We actually managed to get a madman in the first room. Wow. Okay. So we're going to just try an AoE bleed. That's... We're going to try and dot as much stuff as we can. And you'll see the impale ability here that I'm talking about. How much damage it does early on. Alright, so he'll actually die before he gets a turn, which is good. Especially in a short dungeon, that's going to be a lot of stress that we really don't need. So there's a guard, but we can bypass it with her, so that really isn't as much of a factor. See, because we're going to be off on speed, it's going to be difficult to leave her in the front row when she impales. So, can we do anything? Yeah, at this point, we can move him back, leave her in the second slot, and just pop Noxious Blast until she can move forward. She's going to... She'll probably... Imp she'll impale here to finish them. The dot, or at least do a little bit of damage here. And then her, she, her main focus is going to be protection. Going through the uh, armor, rather. Heal through that. Um, his bleed resist is a little high, so start stress reduction. I didn't pick her simply because she's in row 4 and we can hit that later. So we are going to hit additional damage here. She's going to go through the armor. You know the prot's 58%. Nickel and diamond him. There we go. 
dead. Her health's okay, but we are going to have to want to slap a bandage on it. So there's better value there than... I don't want her to be too far behind. Okay, so we're going to grab these things on our way. Uh, okay, well... Normally don't like to backtrack, but early on in the game I do want these. Try and get our heirloom count up as much as we can. Paid for in blood. Okay. This one is I thought it was holy water, but Oh no, no, it's anti venom. That's right. Is it the wreath that's holy water? Mm, I don't remember. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. Typically, he well, he's not a grave robber. I could have went all the way around, but I think we'd actually incur more stress than rather than just fighting this famous last words, of course, but. Let's see what it is. Probably a lobster. Oh, okay. Jellyfish. Now well, there's more stress right there than just walking around. That's why I say usually you can be selective if you have scouting. Even with that accuracy buff, she still missed those two. Probably pop the uh, bleed for the finale on the uh, last the last room. I will use it if he's got it. I don't. I don't actually, I don't. Not sure this jester has it. Now that I think about that. Oh wow. Surprised with her accuracy that that didn't hit. There we go. Abomination cleansed from our lands. The light, the promise of safety. God. Uh... A little bit of food, we'll just throw it on her real quick. She's a little bit behind where I'd like her to be, but... This guy has to go first, everybody knows that. Then we'll go here, and here, and then leave him last. Yeah, he, I don't think he has finale. That was a low roll. Okay, still dead though. Want to get that out of the way early. The slow death, unforeseen, 
forgiving. Okay, they have a guard, but we can again still you can hit through the guard with the shield breaker, which is why she's pretty good here. Since we can't reach third slot with her, we'll focus here. be able to at least end one yeah we can end him we'll get rid of that turn judgment isn't really a play there we need to get them up they're both a little behind schedule this should be able to tick a bleed no nope, it resisted okay so now she will focus on hitting that one that's guarded and we'll just blight try and blight here since we don't have Finale, though, I won't be able to use that. There we go. Okay, dead. Now we'll go here. Everybody's pretty much healed up, so just try and uh, whittle away. Okay, it's dead. So let's bring down some stress from somebody a little more important. It would be that one, because we want to bring them next raid if we can. And then this would be the second one to bring, because we have plenty of Plague Doctors. This Journal pages really aren't going to help. Move on. Okay, so there's... Last room is the one that'll have the, uh... Last fight in it. Good to go. I don't have that, so I don't want to interact with it. The match is struck. A blazing star is born. And torch up. As the light gains purchase. Normally I would also eat there. And purpose is made clear. That would have been a good move, but I honestly didn't think of it. Until I was walking in the room. I normally would have just used up the food. Decisive bubbling. Same thing, we're gonna try and focus here, get him out of here, because he does cause a significant amount of stress at a low level. That should be enough. Okay, good. And we still got a few ticks too, on the rest of the stuff. We're gonna avoid him next turn knowing he's gonna die. He's going to take four additional damage. Um, then we'll focus here and then leave him for last. Since he's guarded, we're going to attack straight through the guard. The shield breaker. Either way, we'll tick, tick this here. Because the shield breaker will be able to kill him. And as you're thinking about the last few fights that you go through in a dungeon, guys, one of the one one of the things I'd recommend is looking at leaving yourself open to damage, like taking more damage and having less stress, preferably, in the last few fights, because you're gonna be able to you're gonna be able to really heal to hundred percent as soon as you get out of the as soon as you get out of the dungeon. But the stress is gonna remain with you, so Keep that in mind as you're prioritizing the last few things in the dungeon, too. Notice how 
notice I'm not healing. I'm just trying to get rid of the, the thing that's going to deliver stress. When if I was in the other dungeons earlier on, I definitely would have done that. Um, virgin negative quirk. Hmm. I don't have a holy water though, so I'm gonna ignore it. We're gonna move out. That's the whole dungeon. Some marine life can flourish. So if we manage to pull a leper, we'll at least have a good trinket set for them. And you can see how helpful the, the um, shield breaker was there too. This is actually really strong early game. That warrior of light's pretty good to get to when you stack it with like slugger. If you're going to constantly run with torches like I do. Well, there's our uh, flagellant. And we can look at our stagecoach. So we get, do get another shield breaker, which is really good. We got a leper. The occultist. Eh, that's probably better than the occultist we have. The antiquarian, I'm not really going to worry about right now. She is okay to run, but early in the game, you're not really trying to show off, and that's pretty much what the antiquarian runs are. This one's pretty strong early game, but it's not worth spending all our money on it. So I'm going to leave it here. We'll pick it up off in the next episode, guys, when I can uh, when I can worry about uh, picking up these guys from the stagecoach, and then we'll move on to the next, next couple dungeons and continue the grind. So I will see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. And uh, see you in the next one.